When you're building your internal tools and portals, it's important that you're giving each group of people the right level of access. Software's always been really strong in handling permissions, but they just rolled out a new feature that's going to make this even easier to roll out permission sets across your entire application. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com and we're a software implementation partner. If you haven't gotten started with software, you can do so using the affiliate link in the description below. So just to recap on software's permissions as they stood before this new feature, you always had your users. You can have bi-directional syncing of your users with other applications like Airtable. We have user groups and you can add multiple different user groups. And those user groups you can add people to manually or you can have a certain set of conditions that may be based off of their email domain or some other attribute of that user, you can give them that specific user group. And then when it comes to applying these settings, you could create conditional filters and you could have logic to say, I only want to see the records that I own. I'm the project manager and those records I want to be able to see based on conditional filters. And then we have visibility settings as well. So we could say only logged in users could see a certain set of records or this block. And we could say that instead of all logged in users, maybe only one of those user groups, maybe only managers could see a certain block that we've created. And then we can get granular around our actions too. So as as we create buttons, we have this one for adding projects and we could say, well, who can see that button? Who's allowed to create new records? And again, we could apply our permissions that way as well. But with that level of granularity, one of the trickier parts has been that oftentimes you find yourself maybe duplicating blocks because you say, well, I wanted to display this one way up here, but based on a different set of logged in permissions than down here, we're going to display projects list and make a couple tweaks. And then maybe we're going to add a calendar someplace else and that's going to have project data. And so what you'd find yourself doing is you have to repeatedly add those visibility rules of who can see what. So if you update something, it got a little bit tricky because you're needing to update those permissions everywhere you go. And this is where global data restrictions come into play, because now instead of managing permissions locally down at the block level, you can say across my entire application, here's what I want people to do. So to access these, we can go over to our users and you see we have users, user groups, and there's a new tab called data restrictions. And here we can add our first restriction, we're going to need to choose our data source. And from here, we'll choose the base that we're using. In this case, I'm using Airtable. And for the first use case, let's say that we only want to view our projects where we are the project owner. So I'm going to choose the projects table for this. We'll click next. So right now, as it stands, I'm able to see all of the different projects in the application. And we want to restrict this based off of the project owner. Again, because we're using Airtable, we're taking a look inside of Airtable and we've got this field for project owner. And this is connected to our team, or essentially you can think of our contacts. So I'm going to be logged in as this Billy Bennett. So we should really only see this one metropolitan project instead of all of the different projects that we have in the app. So to do this, let's choose our user group and we'll set it for employee. We could have multiple groups if we want to add that as well. Let's add our restriction. So from here, this is looking at that projects table. These are the different fields that we have on the project. And I've got this one called project owner email. If I look back in Airtable, what I've done is project owner email is a lookup. So it's pulling the email address from the person, the team record who this matches here. So Billy Bennett in this case is this billy at example.com. So now we'll say if that project owner email, which is on our projects table, and we'll say if this includes any of, and then we can choose from our logged in user and email here. And we'll say, okay, if that email matches the email that we have on that project owner, let's go ahead and save this. You'll wanna make sure that we publish our new settings here. And then we can go ahead and refresh our application. And now you can see we just have that single project that I'm able to see because I am logged in as Billy. Now I left this other block on here. It's really just a duplicate, but just to show you that we didn't have to then set the permissions at the block level. Here are two different blocks of projects and this was applied globally across both of those blocks. And in fact, if we had something totally different, a different page, like a calendar, for example, we've got a calendar block on here. Now I think this is automatically looking at the tasks instead of projects, but if this was looking at our project dates, again, we'd only be able to see the data that pertains to us, that single project record that we have. Okay, so this is awesome how easy it was to apply those restrictions, but this has enabled new functionality that we haven't been able to do in software before. And so if I want to add a project, I've got a little form that pops up here and I can plug in some details about my projects. Well, let's say right now we need to plug in the account. What company is this project 
four. Well, right now, if I click this account drop down, I can see all of the different accounts that I have in Airtable. Well, presumably, we don't want to just give that information away, right? If you have a CRM or something else, you don't want to suddenly expose all of your data to everybody who's using this form. So how can we fix that? Right now, if we take a look at Airtable, take a look at our accounts, you can see we have these three example accounts. So one thing that we've done right now is our accounts are tied to team members, right? There's different team members that work at this company. And so what we're going to do is, again, I added a field to show the email addresses of those team members. If I go to edit the field, we're looking at the team relationship and we're looking at the email address. So we're gonna use that as the basis to be able to add another global data restriction to limit what we're able to see. So the important thing to remember is that even though we are creating a record, right, we're creating a project, the permission we need to apply this on is actually the account table. So we're not saying, hey, you can't create a project or you can create a project. We could add those restrictions as well. But what we want to do is say, we don't even want to see these options for the account if they're not relevant to us, if it's not the account that I work at. So in order to do this, we need to actually do another read or view permission as opposed to create, and this is on the account. So let's head back into our global data restrictions. We'll add a new one. Again, we're gonna choose our same source and base. This time we're going to do this on the accounts, click next. Same thing here, we'll use the employee. And remember, we're not doing create, this is based on view again. So let's add a new restriction. And our condition here will say if emails includes any of, and then we've got our logged in user, and that's going to be our logged in user's email address again. Let's save this, make sure we publish. And now when I refresh this and I click to add a new project, if I click the drop down for account, I only see that Los Pollos Hermanos. Now let's double check that. Let's go back into Airtable. Remember, I'm logged in as Billy and Billy is associated with that exact company. So you can see how now we're able to actually restrict some of the values in forms, which has been something that a lot of people have asked about for a while. So this is a great new feature that they've added that not only makes it easier to handle our information in blocks, but also restricts that information even in forms. Okay, let's do one more example here. So we've got the account figured out, so Los Pollos Hermanos, but then we've got the project owner field and right now, same issue, right? We're exposing all of the contacts that we have. Well, we don't wanna show everybody, every person that we have in here. Instead, we only want to say, hey, if this person works at the same company that I do, now I want to be able to add them. And there's lots of contacts that don't work at that company. So let's head into Airtable again, and we'll click on team. And here on the team, you can see we have the account. And now I made a lookup just to find that account ID here. That's what we're gonna base this off of. So Billy and Olivia both work at the same company, therefore they have the same account ID. So we wanna say if there's a match on this account ID, those are the people who we can now choose in that dropdown of contacts. So let's add a restriction, same thing here. And this time we'll choose team, click next, do this for employees add a restriction, and now we'll say if that account ID, and we can do includes any of, we'll go into our logged in user and match on that account ID. Let's go ahead and save that, publish. Once again, we'll refresh, we'll add our project, and our project owner field now only has those two options, Billy Bennett and Olivia Burton, that we can select here. So we've covered a lot of ground here, but all of the examples we talked about today were using the view permissions. And remember, at any point you could edit or create new restrictions, not just around viewing these records, but also around creating, editing, and deleting. So for creating records, maybe we don't want employees to create records, only managers can create records, so we could disable that. Or maybe you want people to be able to create records, but then once they hit a certain status, they no longer have permission to edit those records. That would be a really common use case we could do with editing, or we could limit their ability to delete. So I'm sure at this point your mind's already exploding with all of these ideas of what you can do with Softer's new global data restrictions. Get started with Softer today by clicking the link in the description below.